Hi, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK. If it's first time at my channel, welcome. Subscribe, share, like. Um, yeah, I learned, I mean, I'm always learning stuff, but today I learned something. And I hate to feel as though, you know, I'm a bit naive or anything like that, but I did not realise that the UK was on par with China with regard to surveillance. You know, having, you know, all these cameras and CCTV. I didn't know they were on par because when I saw a video with China, I mean, you could see all the cameras on the street. Here in the UK, we don't see them. And so I'm thinking to myself, so where are they? Then I'm wondering if, you know, all this digging up of the street, we're getting all the streets dug up. Every minute there's something wrong with the rails. I'm thinking to myself, are they fitting these biometric cameras all over the place? Anyway, I decided to read you out a couple of stuff. So it's not left to memory. But um, did you know that Britain has more surveillance camera per person than any country except for China? US and Russia are close behind. The reason cited, it's supposed to be combating terrorism. Um, and they said there is an increase in surveillance and a decline in privacy safeguards during 2007. Uh, concerns over immigration and border control. So June the 20th, which is a couple of days time, is surveillance camera day, apparently. Uh, it's not a celebration of the surveillance camera, but to allow people to raise awareness about their capabilities, merits and consequences in light of the cameras. It will include everything from open days at a number of CCTV control centres to public fact sheets to discussions in the media. Everyone can contribute to the conversation through hashtag camera day 2019. So, I knew that we were being watched, but I didn't realise to what extent. I mean, you get a feeling, don't you? I mean, if you're on Facebook, you're kind of sceptical now what you write. I mean, even ordinary people, we don't have much to say, but you kind of think, hmm, you know, somebody might be watching. When you're on the phone, you're kind of wary about what you're saying, even though you're talking rubbish. And that's how it's making us feel, because... Somewhere deep inside us, we know we are being watched, even though we don't know how. So apparently these cameras are in homes, they're in public places. Um, oh yeah, and apparently this guy, he tried to obstruct his face from the, um, from the biometric, from the facial recognition system. Would you believe he was arrested? And find um, the UK is adopting a surveillance technologies in a style more typical of China than of the West. Police in England and Wales have used facial recognition to surveil peaceful protests and people with mental health problems. No other police force in Europe is using live facial recognition for public surveillance. Uh, Gus Hussein of Privacy International noted that the country, which is Britain, has the world's largest network of surveillance cameras, plans for national identity cards rich with personal and biometric information, and little government accountability when personal information is lost. Does the UK care about if they breach our human rights? I don't think so. I don't think they're bothered at all. They'll go along with it to make it, you know, the, you know, polite, make it all look like they're worried and concerned. I mean, it's typical. I mean, even like Grenfell Tower, they're still protesting because, you know, I think 17 families still haven't been housed. All that lovely speech and all of that kind of stuff. Make out like they're sorry. They don't give a toss. Ugh. A large-scale YouGov survey stated that of 15,000 people in 13 countries, 
there was no majority support for the cameras. 74% were against for mass surveillance. In Britain, only one in seven agreed that foreign nationals should be surveilled in full. The report also found that people who knew they were being watched also restricted their use of the internet to obtain health advice. Hmm, that's interesting. In, related to, in, relate, uh, in a related blow to free speech, China's internet censorship policies severely restrict all video sharing websites such as YouTube that are not state controlled. And you know they're already starting to control YouTube now. It's being censored. They're taking down stuff if people complain about it. You know, if it's sound, if it's got hate in it, or if it's got any kind of antagonistic comments. You know, you've got some real people out there who really, you know, there's this guy, and he's going, I don't understand why my um, my my video was taken down, but his his um videos, even though they're not overtly um, racist. They are. I mean, I'm not out to report anyone, but I just thought to myself, how can you not know? Just because you're not saying, oh, those niggers or those wogs or those effing blacks, just because you're not saying that, doesn't mean that you're not spreading hate, which was what he was doing. Anyway, I don't know which video they took down. He was talking about they can see it somewhere else. But, you know, when you think about things like that, yes. I agree. I mean, there is so much. I think when you have freedom of speech, you have to have a sense of responsibility and you have to be accountable for what you say. So, yeah, we can all get emotional like I do sometimes when I go. Ooh. Um, but, yeah, we can all get emotional and say things that we shouldn't say, but you should never kind of attack vehemently anybody. You know what I mean? And bully and intimidate. You shouldn't do that. Anyway, so that's censorship of YouTube. Apparently, there's a rapid expansion of technologies for surveillance, identification and border control and a much slower adoption of policies for safeguard to safeguard privacy and security, says Mark Rotenberg of the Electronic Privacy Information Centre. This government has access to its people and technology that China doesn't. So we've got, you know, in the UK, they've got more access to the public than China. That's saying something. Uh, the combination of CCTV, biometric databases and tracking technologies can be seen as part of a much broader exploration, often funded with support from the US, oblique UK, War on Terror or the use of interconnected smart systems to track movements and behaviours of millions of people in both time and space, the Information Commissioner report says. I'm going to be putting the links below so you don't think I'm just talking out of my head, you know what I mean? Um, so suspicion-based surveillance is when intelligence services have an interest in particular person or organisation that they wish to target using surveillance. Now, to me, that is what it should be used for. But, oh, no. Suspicion-less surveillance, that's what they're using, refers to the collection of bulk data without any justifiable reason for why the data is needed. And that's what the police are doing. They've just got this bulk data that they've just got hoarded up. I don't know what they're waiting for. They're trying to find matches. They think everybody's a bloody criminal. So they're just hoping to find a match. If they don't find a match, they'll do a lookalike. Facial recognition cameras are now creeping onto the streets of Britain and the US, yet most people aren't even aware. We see the roads being dug up all the time. Maybe that is what they're doing. That was my little two pence worth. We think they're going to monitor cars that are speeding. But they're monitoring us, folks. As we walk around, our faces could be scanned and subjected to digital police lineup. We don't even know about. There are over six million surveillance cameras in the UK. Where the hell are they? 
I wonder if they're incorporated into the speed cameras. Six million more per citizen than any other country in the world except China. In the UK, biometric photos are taken and stored of people whose faces match with criminals, even if the match is incorrect. Scary. Automated face recognition has been introduced in a number of cities around the world, in the US, China, Germany and Singapore. The police argue that piloting such systems has allowed them to test the technology to help identify potential terrorists and other known offenders. Yeah, right. Face recognition, that's a good, that's a good reason, isn't it? You know, combating terrorists, that's what um, Trump is always going about. What a good reason to invade people's privacy by using that as an excuse. Maybe there's a valid excuse. Maybe they know something we don't know. But to that extent, I mean, they should be able to use that suspicion-based um, surveillance. Not everybody. Face recognition success rate at recognising faces has been shown to be as low as 2%. Linked to this is an inbuilt bias within the software that makes the technology far less accurate at identifying darker skinned people and women. It therefore has the potential to exacerbate tensions between ethnic minorities and police. That's the thing, it's not even accurate. You wouldn't even mind if they had this equipment and it was accurate, but it's not even accurate. The police are using facial recognition, recognition for their watch list, which is a database of faces against which it is trying to match live images. These databases include policing images of people taken into custody who may never have been convicted of a crime and are unlikely to have consented to their data being used in this way. There have been two significant pilots in the UK in recent times, in the south of Wales and in London, both are subject of judicial review actions, brought respectively by city, civil liberties organisations, Liberty and Big Brother Watch. Not sure if the pilot has been concluded. But the thing is, is that these people can jump in and intervene. But are they going to listen? They're not. It's like, you know, they've got, they're throwing Boris Johnson in our face, Gove, all that lot. We don't have a say, so why are they shoving it in our face on our TV screens every minute? I know I'm getting away from the point, but all I'm trying to say is what we say doesn't matter. What we think doesn't matter. They're making the decisions without us. And we just have to adopt those decisions. So they, they show, have it all on our TV screens, all over our newspapers, as though we're involved in the process, when we're not. It's the Conservative parties that choose. They're the ones who whittle it down. They're the ones who choose the final two. They're the ones that make the decision. So why do they keep showing it on our TVs? Why are they involving us in the process or making us feel involved? Oh, let me get back to this. San Francisco banned the use of face recognition in its public systems in May. Other American cities are expected to follow suit with face recognition software currently being used in the likes of Chicago, New York and Detroit. What I don't understand is how come some cities are successful in banning the cameras and some are not. It's the same thing I thought about the weed. Remember the marijuana? Some states in America can ban it and others can't. I mean, why isn't it consistent? Surveillance cameras are becoming more sophisticated and computerised without necessarily looking much different. There is no signage or information that tells us about their enhanced capabilities, which means the activities behind them becomes less transparent. As the technology has been min miniaturised and costs have fallen, new types of cameras have emerged, including body-worn, video devices, drones, dash and headcams. 
At the same time, imaging and recording techniques have become more and more standardized. This has allowed for greater connectivity between systems and has raised quality to the point that images can be trustworthy evidence in legal proceedings. Besides face recognition, we are seeing the emergence of cameras capable of object tracking and recognition, plus advances in noise or smell analysis. Police forces in the UK and the US have been trialling systems that predict how likely the individuals are to commit a crime. I saw that somewhere. And yeah, the police have this system. I forget what they call it. But they say it's supposed to predict who's going to commit a crime. And you know what? how it does that? Oh, I wish I had remembered it offhand. But it actually goes into certain areas where crime is quite high. And then they just at random stop people in those areas where there's high crime. And they call that the predictable um, whatever this is how likely uh, individuals are to commit a crime based on the crime in that area. So God forbid you've got a child that you're raising and because you can't leave that area and that area's got a high crime rate, that son hasn't got a chance in hell. I've got to look for that, that article I saw. Um, anyway. It is all a quantum leap away from the old CCTV cameras with which we are familiar. This is a biased measure based on area and how many crimes... Oh, it says it here. Okay. And how many crimes were committed in that area. Nothing to do with the individual, but the individual is penalised for living in that area, being in that area, walking in that area, schooling in that area. They can be stopped at any time. Therefore, those unfortunate enough, oh, I've just said that, surveillance cameras in England and Wales are meant to be regulated by the Specialist Office of the Surveillance Camera Commissioner, along with the Information, uh, inf sorry, along with the Information Commissioner's Office, which has responsibility for overseeing data protection in the UK, but not sure how effective that is. The Office of the Biometric Commissioners is meant to be regulating the face recognition systems but we don't know if they are so remember june the 20th is surveillance camera day if you're interested um like i said it's not a celebration of surveillance cameras but it's to raise awareness and for you to know what you should be doing or how you should be behaving or how you should adapt your behavior in the light of knowing that there's over six million surveillance camera in the UK and there could be one right where you live. Anyway, um, Surveillance Camera Day represents an opportunity for everyone to help shape the discussion. It will be interesting to observe how, of how the general public and other players respond. So there you have it, folks. I mean, you know, we muck around and we say, you know, we're being watched, Big Brother. Yes, I know we're being watched. And everybody says, yeah, I know we're being monitored. You can look in your car, in your phone. Your phone's got facial recognition in it. Or they're trying, you know, when you use your phone, it tries to encourage you to either use your fingerprint or your facial recognition. Maybe that's linked to goodness knows what. PC now. You know, my PC's always saying... Um, don't you want to use a password? You can stop using your password, you know. You can, well, it doesn't speak like that, but you can stop using the password. You can just use your face to open up your screen. I'm like, nah, I ain't doing that. So where I do have a choice, I'm going to maintain it as much as possible. And, um, yeah, that's it, really. You know, soon everybody's going to have to have their smart meters. I've been avoiding that. But now I've been noticing on the TV, they're kind of latching on to it with this eco-friendly stuff and showing these little kids in the garden, trying to make it look all attractive when really it's another spyware. You know, it's supposed to be voluntary. But in America, they're forcing them to do it, actually. 
they're forcing people to have those smart meters in their homes, even though there's increased radiation. So they're finding when if you haven't got a phone, well, everybody's got a phone, so that's one way. But I think they're restricted on the type of phone you have. So if you've got, you know, we have a lot of people who've got the old phones. That doesn't work for them. You need to have one of the new phones, and the latest phone, the better. I wouldn't be surprised if they start putting down the phone prices so everybody gets one. So you've got your phones, you've got some of these TVs that look at you. You've got the smart meters. You've got where, where that doesn't work. You've got cameras on the street. You've got mass facial recognition for wide groups of people. So, yeah, you better be a good girl and a good boy. Otherwise, you're going to get your bottom slapped. And that's all for now. Have a good evening.